May I, in the same breath, request the speakers and moderator of the fourth professional session to please join us on stage. The theme of this session is Maritime Connectivity Through Shipping and Trade, Part 2. We have a selection of brilliant speakers and an equally illustrious moderator by the way of Vice Admiral G. Ashok Kumar, National Maritime Security Coordinator, National Security Council Secretariat, Government of India. With him on stage are very five illustrious speakers, namely Dr. Sanjeev Ranjan, Dr. Adrian Haak, Ms. Monpui Saivi, Mr. Mahadevan Shankar, and Admiral Jayanta Pereira. Their biodatas have already been included in the conference booklet. You would, I'm sure, must have already read them. Now, I would hand over the proceeding to the moderator. Admiral, you have the floor. Thank you, Divya. Admiral Sunil Lamba, Admiral K.B. Singh, Admiral Bilu Chauhan, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here as a part of the uh, IPRD and uh, moderate this uh, very important session on uh, maritime connectivity through shipping and trade. As you all are probably already aware, you know, currently over 80% of global trade is maritime in nature. And in the case of India, it's actually more than 95%. Now, uh, Commodore Debesh Lahiri uh, spoke about the uh, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development report. And that review of Maritime Transport 2023 report mentions as to how the maritime trade is expected to grow at about 2.4% in 2023, and more than 2% from 2024 to 28. So that's the kind of volumes that we are looking at uh, into the future. Now, there are numerous measures that are also required to take advantage of this maritime connectivity. And there are many, many measures which are uh, on in various uh, governments across the world. And when it comes to India, uh, you all are aware of Pro Project Sagar Mala and various other connectivity projects uh, you know, uh, outside of the country as well. And today we have got uh, Dr. Sanjeev Ranjan, uh, who is currently uh, the chairman of National Shipping Board, was uh, uh, previously the secretary shipping, directly involved with these connectivity projects and uh, the Sagarmala project itself. So we couldn't have had a better speaker to talk to us on that particular subject. Now the next I want to mention is that the issue of, uh, ma uh, uh, you know, an issue that concerns maritime trade is quite often the geopolitical happenings in certain part of the world. Uh, of course, when you, when you look at, uh, uh, say, the impact on international shipping lanes, it might just be restricted to the region which is disturbed by that particular geopolitical activity. However, uh, if there are specific cargo which originates from or transits through uh, the regions of uh, uh, insecurity uh, because of the ge geopolitical activity, uh, we have a huge problem. And to talk about that, we have Dr. Adrian Haak, the resident representative to India, European and International Cooperation uh, of uh, CAST New Delhi. Next, the, the other point that I want to mention is about the peculiarity of the maritime domain. Because 24 7, maritime security is threatened by non traditional threats to maritime security. So, this is, this is the reality. And the other fact is this that Almost every non-traditional threat to maritime security is transnational in nature. Because of that nature, a multinational approach is the way ahead. And when you look around uh, in, the, in the entire world, and specifically in the Indo-Pacific region, there are many multinational initiatives which try to address non-traditional threats to security. And uh, uh, Commodore Debesh Lehri mentioned about Djibouti Code of Conduct, JADA Amendment, and the uh, contact group on illicit maritime activities. Now, to talk to us about India's engagement with these organizations, because as I mentioned, more than 95% of our trade uh, is through the seas. And so it's extremely critical for us to ensure maritime security for our own national prosperity. So our engagements, both the current and the uh, future prospects of engagement with both these organizations, uh, the, uh, the uh, Djibouti Code of Conduct as well as the uh, CGIMA, uh, will be covered by uh, our uh, representative from the MEA. Uh, she is Ms. Uh, Manpu Isavi, and she is the Joint Secretary at DISA in the MEA. Now, the next point is this, that while, uh, again, uh, I think Commodore Debesh Lahiri mentioned this, while there are a number of challenges when it comes to protecting 
supply chains, now overcoming the challenges of certain critical cargo which needs to flow in, uh, uh, such as the rare earth elements, rare metals and uh, energy critical elements. That will be cleared, uh, sorry, that will be covered by uh, Mr. Mahadevan Shankar. He is the founder and CEO of Arzu International Australia. He is also the co-founder of the current and strategic forum Australia and in addition to being an honorary adjunct fellow of the NMF. We are also fortunate to have uh, the, the ex-Sri Lankan naval commander, uh, naval, uh, the ex-naval chief, Admiral Jayanta Pereira. Uh, he is uh, a, a staff course made of mine. And both of us had Admiral Billu Chawan as our head of training team Navy at uh, Wellington. And so he will cover the Sri Lankan perspective on all these topics of uh, what are the maritime opportunities and challenges and also cover Sagar, Sagarmala and Sri Lanka. Uh, so this is a brief introduction about the session that we are going to go through. I would request each panelist to uh, try and stick to the time so that there is adequate time for uh, audience interaction. And may I also request the audience to utilize the expertise of the panel that is sitting here to, to ask any question that you want uh, on, this, on this critical topic. 